What is going on guys, Brown here, welcome back to the F1 career mode here today for part 57 for the Japanese Grand Prix What an interesting race is going to be, wet to dry Here is the grid So it is Carlos Sainz on pole position with Max Verstappen P2 P3 and P4 is George Russell and Sebastian Vettel. P5 and P6 are Pierre Gasly and Valtteri Bottas. Charles Leclerc is P7 and Brown is P8. Running out the top 10 for not the first time this season is Lando Norris and Sergio Perez. It's an all English row of Devin Butler and Lewis Hamilton. Then it's Nico Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen. Alex Alban is 15th and Giovinazzi 16th. Roman Grosjean on 17th with Daniel Ricciardo off the pace of his teammate yet again. And on the back row of the grid is Lance Stroll and Luke Weber. This is the grid for the Japanese Grand Prix. And this is the five red lights coming on here in Japan. And it's lights out and away we go. Everyone's ginned up to get away and need to find the traction in these wet conditions. We've got a decent start now. Trying to push the pan. No. Lando Norris. We've made contact with Lando Norris. Sent him off into the barrier. Lando looks to be out of this race already. We're side by side now with Charles Leclerc. Push him out wide. Sergio Perez now. Squeezes past the Monegas. And now we've gained a couple of positions. We're into P seven after we started p8 and now can we challenge those in front it's Pierre gasly then it is foundry bottas in this race it heading into the two degnas now degna one is complete and now into degna two we're gonna absolutely send it down the inside of big gasly there was a bit of contact there and now can we send it coping ashley star into the hairpin of Valtteri bottas you bet we can and we get the move complete and that puts us up into p5 and now the next car ahead of us is our teammate so this is a replay off the start then we got a decent start and now you can see lando norris here just to the right of us and we went over and then i've went to the outside of Charles Leclerc and that's where the contact is and then we ended up going wheel to wheel with Charles Leclerc later in the start phase but look here this is on board with Lando Norris when he hits the barrier he's gonna have to pit this whole front wind gone by the looks of things on the camera angle but I'm just gonna go back to that in just a second as Lando Norris gets the power back down and trundles back to the pit but look here as I know I come over but Lando Norris he turns into us you can see that just just before the contact he slightly turned right and then we came across and there was contact not saying that without him turning right we still wouldn't have made contact because we probably would have but it was a bit dodgy I thought that looked a bit dodgy we got past George Russell whilst I was saying about that but George has got us back and you know if you watched the last seasons of Japan you know this is my weakest track as we go wide again so for me not only was it bad that it was Japan I don't dislike Japan as a circuit I do like Japan but I'm just horrendous around it I lose so much time in the first sector that by the time I've gained it all back we're back to sector one again that's just always been a pattern for me on the F1 games in Japan so the fact it's raining as well really didn't help my confidence in this race we've managed just to stay ahead there off Valtteri Bottas but he's on the back of us now and he's gone to our inside and even Pierre Gasly's on the move we're three wide this isn't gonna go well we're all three abreast we've gone wide Valtteri Bottas has just parked it in the middle of the track we've lost out to Pierre Gasly and Valtteri Bottas as they go side by side through the S section Valtteri Bottas does get ahead we somehow get Pierre Gasly back now Pierre Gasly's going wheel to wheel with Sergio Perez but we've gone wide Perez 
I don't even know what's happened. A big Gasly has just gone from defending Perez to getting past us, and Perez has lost that to the Renault there of Devon Butler. It's all happening in the S sections in this Japanese Grand Prix. Skipping on now to the end of the lap. Here comes Devon Butler on us now. We're going to have to defend all the way around the outside. And oh, look, there's George Russell. George Russell's off. And he's pointing the wrong way. And that kind of threw me, George Russell, our teammate, of course. He was, what well, he was for at least fourth in this race, battling away with Sebastian Vettel. And this is a replay of what happened. And he has just tagged Sebastian Vettel. has gone off as well. And Vettel could quite easily just put his foot down right now, but he's just trending enough. And there's, as you can see in the background, so we'll have an onboard here. This is with Sebastian Vettel. So into the first corner and George, I think you got a point blame at his door. Let me know in the comments below. I might put a poll in the top right. You can do that, but I don't know. That's a dodgy one, that one. I'm not too sure racing incident, but if you had to put playing at someone's door and now here we come and oh we were actually we weren't far off George Russell there. We could have wiped him out and ourselves out there. That was a bit dodgy. But that's two more in turn one is always deadly here in Japan and that's just gained us two positions in this race. And now we're gonna be left defending Sergio Perez we defend him. Around the outside at 130R, yeah, fair enough, Sergio Perez, he, he thought about it and tried it. But uh, I'm just praying, obviously the rain is going to stop, you would have seen on the the um, strategy at the start of this race. We're side by side now with Sergio Perez that he thinks about getting us back. Down the inside he goes, we can just about see this camera angle is stunning, but not when, it's, when we're battling. We do lose out to Sergio Perez and now we are going to be looking even further behind us now at Charles Leclerc in this race as Charles Leclerc we've gone a bit wider now Charles Leclerc has got down our inside we force him wide force him to a point where if he didn't back out either he was going to go into the barrier or he's going to make contact here comes Charles Leclerc though down the inside of us into the 130 yeah we defend him and now somewhere I think Lewis Hamilton's actually overtaken him and there's the contact and after Charles Leclerc actually getting overtaken by Lewis Hamilton somewhere I missed that we do carry on and on lap 7 it is time for the drives thank god so into the pits we come and we are going to be going on the set of the softs of course because we have used the wet tyres we don't need to make the extra stop and do the mandatory tyres so the reason why this pits up so long is I made I had contact on the front wing there was damage and it felt horrendous so I changed the front wing so we're gonna come out now and have some work to do in this race hopefully i'm hoping this dry pace is going to be a lot stronger than the wet pace it is still raining a bit you can see but on lap 8 large stroll he's gone and there's the one board with us we were right behind him as his engine blew that's brought out the safety car in this race bunching everyone up and this is this race just got very interesting see everyone was fairly spread out due to the, the wet weather i'm just gonna pull it back though to this pit stop because as you would have seen there if you had the keen eye viewer you can go back and watch that again but you would have seen the light went from red to green back to red and then went green again when we eventually got going which I thought was very odd. I didn't actually realise that until I was kind of nearly finished this video, basically. But we're now in P16. So we need to get the hammer down and get through this kind of traffic in a way. We're well out of position. George Russell's well out of position now as well. So as we 
now cut to us we're actually behind George Russell actually no George Russell is behind us rather so hopefully we can maybe get ahead the tyres definitely a bit cold and to the safety car but we are going to get through this pack we've sent it on Lucas Weber I think that was and Daniel Ricciardo two into the hairpin that is an amazing move if I do say so myself now though here we go one lap later on to Alexandra Albon now and we get the other Toro Rosso we are flying now here comes Daniel Ricciardo battling away with Alexandra Albon as well there's any contact there Albon defends and now skipping on onto lap 13 thought about it on Kevin Magnussen nearly did again obviously Kobe Ash is known for having done crazy moves into that hairpin so I thought I'd have a bit of it as well and now we're going to go around the outside of Kevin Magnussen maybe even Nico Hulkenberg as well with there be a contact with Nico Hulkenberg there's contact again you would have seen hand of rage with Kevin Magnussen and now we're drag racing Kevin Magnussen into turn one we go and Magnussen we've made contact with in his round he's literally drifted it round turn two somehow stopped it from spinning and now George Russell his engine's blown and we and he is out of the Japanese Grand Prix this is a replay of what happened with Kevin Magnussen so we left him space and he went for a gap that didn't exist and he did very well to stop that from going completely round but let's go back to George Russell this is what happened his engine blown and it has not been a good day for George Russell being taken out ish by Sebastian Vettel and now his engines blown right in front of a Mercedes quite ironically obviously Williams running the Mercedes engine so a bit bad there on Mercedes point of view but also for us as we obviously George Russell being our teammate kind of is our engine potentially going to blow as well I'm did surprised that George Russell's engine did blow as you can see everyone making their second stops because the um, re the reliability has been very good I'm only was starting to go into the second and maybe even third on some parts and um, components because the engine has been so reliable but on to lap 19 into the pits we come you can see here it's basically like we weren't even like it weren't even raining at the start of this race we are going to come into the pits but this is where I made a fatal mistake obviously I had to change front wing in the first stop but for them to do that I had to you know it, it for the front wing repair I had to put it on yes and I left it on yes so when I came back into the pits we they did it again but I'm just going to go back to when we came into the pits because for some reason the game glitched and we did a little bunny hop into the pits which is quite funny but we've got to go back on the attack and we send it down the inside of Kevin Magnussen we're in P11 we're now in P10 into the points this is you can just see the pure speed we got on Kevin Magnussen and you can't beat a move into 130R can you but we haven't managed to pull away from Kevin Magnussen one lap later and he's going to fight back now heading up towards 130R again and Kevin Magnussen has done it to us fair play for trying but now we're just going to have to wait maybe thought about it into, into the chicane like we did earlier on in the Grand Prix but we're just going to wait until turn one and now here we go we're going to go around the outside there's contact there that is Daniel Ricciardo making contact with someone I'm not quite sure up ahead and now Kevin Magnussen's going with well Kevin Magnussen done it fair play Kevin Magnussen what a move that was round the outside we're now defending um, I think it's it's one of the McLarens I think it's Hulkenberg and now we can go on Daniel Ricciardo down the inside we do get the Aussie man and now we can go back on the charge for Kevin Magnussen in this race 
and now once again copy and paste of the of a couple of laps to go into 130R we get the job done on Kevin Magnussen I actually think that McLaren was Lando Norris and it was Lando Norris as now we are on the back of Nico Hulkenberg we thought about trying to go around the outside and then we just ran wide so that really didn't work but one lap later we're going to try the outside again and this is amazing camera angles we got him round the outside into turn one now though on to the final lap of the Japanese Grand Prix Carlos Sainz has controlled this race from start to finish it's been a Red Bull masterclass and Carlos Sainz will pick up his second win of the season Max Verstappen's going to take P2 Sebastian Vettel runs out the podium Charles Leclerc gets P4 Valtteri Bottas P5 with with Sergio Perez P6 P Gasly P7 and we are going to come home for a P8 not good enough not good enough at all let's push harder next time ok Red Bull pulling out all the stops today what a great win Talk to me, Alex. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. So that's been the Japanese Grand Prix for this season and what a Grand Prix it turned out to be in the end. I'm kind of glad that we've done that race now. We're still in the hope for the title but I just want to talk about Jeff. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. Let's push harder next time, okay? Jeff, I don't know what he's been smoking because I literally drove to my limit I literally floored it and floored it and floored it yes it's where we started in P8 but you know what they were the most well deserved two points we're still in the hunt in the in the drivers and we're still in the hunt in the constructors as well but we're 102 points behind so it still is mathematically possible but we're gonna need a lot of luck it's basically between Ferrari and Red Bull we were saying earlier about the parts and this is kind of what I meant like we're literally going over into the second column now because the engine's been so reliable um, we're going to save some more components obviously the regulation change only four races away now as we go to America and that kind of side of the world next time out in Mexico but if you have enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe and if you don't want to miss a video make sure to hit the bell as well i've been brown 202 and i will see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>